um, the Italian community in the early 60s was a very different community in its perception uh, of Australia and of Australia's perception of the Italians was very different. The Italians uh, uh, were seen not really like we saw ourselves. Uh, we were seen like one part of us, that is the builders, and certainly we are extremely proud of being that. But there were so many other parts of it which were completely not seen or forgotten. And one of the great things that uh, Franco first did was with the Transville Prize to unite this budding name into in, in Australian consciousness of a, of a major industry into uh, that of the major and at the time in fact only uh, prize uh, for contemporary art in Australia. And um, with that came also a joining of a split that was very obvious to us in Australia, that of culture on one side and industry on the art. Uh, art industry. With the transfer prize, the two were joined together. And I think that was really the start in which, uh, the start of a, of a process uh, in which the Italians from the laborers, and again I say, fundamental being laborers, being also something else, which were the patrons of the arts, the bringing into Australia of another way of looking at civilization. And also from an industrial point of view, was a novel thing. In Italy we had the tradition of, say, Pirelli or Olivetti or Fiat, these great industrial concerns which were also great patrons of the literature, of the arts, of the sciences. And here became the same thing through an Italo-Australian company. So it was a major step towards having the Italians to be seen as more, a more complex community than just uh, the suppliers of, uh, of muscle. Again, very proud of being suppliers of muscle. But there was something else. And uh, I think that uh, if it is true that the Italians are now the flavor of the month in Australia, it's due, I think, in no small part to this company, Transville, to all the people who work here, uh, to the great works that they've done uh, in uh, the whole of Australia, which are for all to see and to use every day, and also to the Transville that then at a certain moment when it seemed that Transfield had exhausted itself completely. There was the idea of creating into a Biennale. And I think that I was the person who supplied that idea to, to Franco through an article that I wrote, I think, in the late 60s. But, um, uh, you know, it's... it's um and the rest is history. What was the vision for Transfield that Franco had in those early days? Well. It was first of all a company that brought power from uh, one part to the other of the continent. So it was a power transmission company. Uh, so it was a fundamental uh, industry for the development of, uh, of Australia. But then uh, there were these extremely imaginary projects that came in succession, uh, one after the other, you know, and the piercing mountains, you know, like the ski tube, uh, perishery, whoever likes skiing or just likes the mountains. Nowadays you don't need anymore to go to do that 45 minutes detour to go to perishery, you just go to the bottom of the ski tube, you go up, and this is a work, you see many of these works in Europe, but in fact here it was the first one. Uh, not to speak about going from one section of the harbor here in Sydney to the other, going underwater. So these are projects of very great, take great imagination. And uh, y you need that confluence of uh, 
the Australian spirit, traditional Australian spirit, and this new vision of uh, what is possible with nature. You see, nature in Australia has been virtually left uh, untouched, but for the clearing of the forests and uh, creating large farms and pastoral industries. Mm -hmm. But really, the landscape in Australia hasn't been touched the way it has been touched in Europe with centuries and centuries and millennia of you know, nurturing and creating bridges from one, from one mountain to the other and tunnels from one place to the other. And this has happened. And I think that really Transville was uh, uh, one of the pioneers, if not the, the absolute pioneer in these large uh, earthworks. So he, he came here as an engineer, a very proficient engineer. He came here with uh, this old background of uh, southern Italian heritage because he comes from Puglia, from the heel of Italy, the same, actually from the same region my father came from. So these very, very ancient traditions, but then he studied in one of the most progressive universities in Europe. Uh, so he had this link of ancient and very novel, technologically absolutely advanced. So he came here in a new country, all to be done, all to be opened up from that point of view of earthworks, etc. And uh, he did it. And the fantasy helped in very great <laughs> measure the, the technological preparation. So what is it inherent within Franco that allowed Transfield to become the company it has become? Imagination. Imagination and belief in himself, uh, in himself and the people who worked with him. Uh, you could see over the years as Transville was growing, there was a very, very strong esprit de corps. Uh, you would never hear Franco saying a derogatory word about anybody who would work with him. He was always encouraging, always. Uh, and so that created this very strong Bond, bonding. There are people who work here, who have been working here for 40 years. You know, you were mentioning the cook, <laughs> you know, the sculptor, the cook, <laughs> the mentor in many respects of so many other people who used Transfield as a as a launch, a platform of launch in the arts. How important was Transfield for new Australians? And in the in the first days, um, you know, Transfield employed lots of um, new Italian immigrants um, to begin with, and they've gone on to, you know, in, in employ lots of um, new Australians. How important has the energy that has come from those people been to the development of the company? Well, the company owes almost everything to the, again, to the confluence of uh, the great imagination of the starter of the founder. Uh, and the fact that he was able to bring from Italy people of extreme skills, um, people sometimes with extreme skills in other areas, farmers, subsistence farmers, who came here and who translated that skill into industrial skills very quickly. So uh, there was a combination of uh, transfer east the men and the women who came from Italy, you know, in many respects, and from Europe, I would like to say, because there were so many very important people within Transville who, in fact, were not only born here, but also came from so many other countries. How important has the family atmosphere within the company, you know, the importance of family, and perhaps the idea that Franco brought to the company, this idea of taking care of his workers? How you important has that been? In why people want to stay and work for transfer? I think it was very important. I can only speak as an extern external observer. I've never worked within transfer. But uh, it seemed to me to be a fundamental part of it uh, because there was a cement which was really a magic of transfer. You saw too many companies of the same kind, but none had that uh, very close. I'll tell you a story. In, uh, in the old uh, building of Transfield, Transfield House, uh, there was always 
at lunchtime, the dining room open. And the dining room was divided in two sections, which were really not so divided. They were really one flowing into the other. One where uh, the top executives, the family, uh, would uh, uh, eat and lunch uh, with their guests. And uh, they had always guests, and not only important people, but guests uh, who were just interesting for one reason or another. And then there was the adjoining dining room in which there were the workers. And uh, you could see that there was no sense of, uh, there was no reverential timor. You say timor in English? <laughs> no reverential fear, yes, uh, towards the, the boss. It was really a family, and that was very important to, to the continuation, to, to that sense of history that you see in Spain. What do you think has been Franco's major impact on the bus business community in Australia throughout the last 40 years? Well, again, uh, maybe my distorted perception, but I think his major contribution has been not only in the large imaginative projects that uh, he has created, but also in this linking of industry with culture and with the arts with uh, the Biennale, the Venice Biennale, the pavilion he created there. It, it, it's been a continuous inter-exchange between the two areas. And he has been the first, and he has been the one who has continued to do that all the time. So others have followed. How important was the Biennale in putting, in sort of putting Australia on the map in terms of um, being seen you know, in an international sense as more than just a new frontier as, as having you know, more here than, than um, you know, just houses on quadrangular blocks of people who were interested in culture, were interested in the arts. How important you know, has Well, that you see, we, let's have no illusions. East Australian visual arts are not terribly important in the world, but for Aboriginal art, both the classical Aboriginal art and most important for res the recent Aboriginal art. That has gone into the major museums everywhere in the world. There are many contemporary Australian artists who are in the museums around the world. But the Biennale of Sydney has brought here artists from all over the world and that has generated invitations to Australian artists from other major exhibitions around the world. That's been fundamental, extremely important. And also the presentation within uh, the Venice Biennale, within the pavilion, of um, every two years of a, a major Australian artist has been also very important to place Australia in the world map. So his impact has been um, all to assess. It's still to be written. Tell me about the... Okay, and um, what do you think has been Franco's major impact on the bus business community in Australia throughout the last 40 years? Well, again, uh, maybe my distorted perception, but I think his major contribution has been not only in the large imaginative projects that uh, he has created, but also in this linking of industry with culture and with the arts. Uh, with uh, the Biennale, the Venice Biennale, the pavilion he created there, it, it, it's been a continuous inter-exchange between the two areas. And he has been the first, and he has been the one who has continued to do that all the time. So others have followed. How important was the Biennale in putting, in sort of putting Australia on the map in terms of um, being seen, you know, in an international sense as more than just a new frontier, as, as having, you know, more here than, than um, you know, just houses on quadrangular blocks of people who were interested in culture, were interested in the arts? How important, you know, has Well, that you been? see, we, let's have no illusions. East Australian visual arts 
are not terribly important in the world. But for Aboriginal art, both the classical Aboriginal art and most important for re the recent Aboriginal art, that has gone into the major museums everywhere in the world. There are many contemporary Australian artists who are in the museums around the world. But the Biennale of Sydney has brought here artists from all over the world, and that has generated invitations to Australian artists from other major exhibitions around the world. That's been fundamental, extremely important. And also the presentation within uh, the Venice Biennale, within the pavilion, of um, every two years of a, a major Australian artist has been also very important to place Australia in the world map. So his impact has been um, all to assess. It's still to be written. Tell me about the... Well, Franco's energy is uh, proverbial. Uh, he has go, he is a dynamo. You know, he's a little pack of uh, of uh, of energy that is ready at all times to explode. But uh, luckily, releases his energy slowly, like the sun. <laughs> and uh, his his physical fitness he, again is proverbial. He swims every day. One day we were on Lucas' boat, and uh, uh, Franco, I think, was 84, um, and. Uh, it was cold, it was winter, almost winter, I remember. And he threw himself in the water outside, manly, uh, everybody with jumpers on. So it's <laughs> really, uh, this physical activity gives him uh, uh, also a lot of that uh, nervous intellectual energy that he radiates. And is this the spirit that has driven transfer, do you think? This energy, yeah. yes. Provided we always remember that uh, with Franco there are 10,000 other human beings. And so there is a reciprocal driving. Certainly has been the imagineering force, but the 10,000 other souls are as important.